South Africa's mining output dropped for a third consecutive month as the industry continued to face an onslaught from the logistics and energy crisis. This was revealed by Statistics South Africa last week Thursday, stating that the output dropped by almost 2% year-on-year for September compared to the same period in 2022. Lower diamond production is among the biggest negative contributors to dampened production. Hi, to Dumela and good evening. My name is Tabo Molokwani. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight, we're joined by David van Veik, who is a mining analyst and he's here to help us understand what could be the cause of the decline in production of diamond. Mr. van Veik, thanks very much for taking the time. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Tabo, and I'm glad to be with you. And good evening to your listeners. Much appreciated. Uh, I want us to just start the conversation by looking at the report uh, that came out uh, last week about the production of diamond. From a mineral point of view, why are we seeing this decline in numbers? Well, the Statistics South Africa talks about, um, you know, the energy crisis, load shedding and, and logistics. But, you know, the transport logistics that affect other mines are not such a problem for diamonds because most of the diamonds are flown by aeroplane from where they are produced to, uh, you know, points of export and so on. They're not trucked or anything like that. Um, you know, diamond production is declining because simply we are running out of diamonds in South Africa. We used to be the world's biggest producer at some point, but we've been steadily declining in the production of diamonds over time. And, you know, World Bank reports and so on have predicted that uh, both Botswana and South Africa at some point will reach a point where uh, we will no longer have sufficient diamonds to be competitive globally. Mm. I mean, it was also reported that the planned maintenance, you know, in our neighboring, uh, our neighbors there, Botswana, has affected the production of diamonds. Maybe you can tell us uh, how that affects the overall output of diamond in the country. Well, I think that <clears throat> Botswana and the Sutu produce significant amounts of, of, of diamonds. Um, you know, the Botswana mines are in decline simply because they're running out of diamonds. But, uh, you know, the, 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 the maintenance of plant, uh, you know, the maintenance of plant all over the country in all mines is a problem. Uh, you know, mines are very derelict if you look at them now compared to what they were a few years ago. And this is part of the fact that mines are cutting back and spending as they try to remain profitable in uh, an environment which is very difficult given that um, you know minerals are declining minerals are not sustainable they're not renewable you know we have to expect this and we need to begin to plan for a post mining economy uh, including in diamonds you know we need to begin to see how do we beneficiate our minerals including our diamonds and instead of just exporting them as raw uh, as raw material um, Britain is the biggest exporter of, 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 of rough diamonds in the world, but it doesn't have a single diamond mine. You know, Belgium, uh, it's 45% of its GDP comes from diamonds, but they don't have a single diamond mine. Uh, Israel, about 40% of its GDP comes from diamonds, but they don't have a single diamond mine. They are all actually working with African diamonds uh, and, 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 and running the economies on African diamonds. You know, it's a tragedy that uh, in terms of Africa, we're not actually in control of our own diamonds and we don't actually benefit much from them. Mm. I mean, you're highlighting a very important uh, issue there. Is it only happening in South Africa? I mean, uh, you've mentioned that uh, we're also seeing a decline in uh, you know countries such as Botswana and other countries there. But is mm. it only, the numbers are only, you know, declining in South Africa, uh, only in Africa, or are we seeing it also happening in some other countries, maybe in uh, West Africa also, or North Africa, if uh, they are mining uh, diamonds there? Is it only happening uh, here in the, uh, well, uh, on the southern well, part of the continent? Well, I think in the southern part of the continent, we've been mining diamonds now 
since 1868. It's a very long time compared to other African countries. And other African, uh, other African countries, many of them have started mining diamonds only very recently, including West Africa. You know, so there the life of mine is still long, whereas in South Africa we reached the end of the life of most mines. So you have mining towns like Coffeefontein and Kimberley and so on that are going backwards very, very fast because the diamonds have run out there. Mm. I mean, lastly, before I let you go, in South Africa, however, production, we saw it falling by 78% to 0.4 million carats, reportedly due to Venetia's scheduled closure of its open pit operations in December 2022. To what extent did the operation affect the production of uh, South Africa now? Well, I think that um, the production is is heavily affected, and we must also take into consideration that in the last year, for example, you get the Arches Fontaine disaster. So all the diamonds that came out of that particular mine stopped for about a year, uh, given 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 that particular disaster. So it had a big impact. Um, I think that uh, besides that, we have the problem of the other mines that are closing down and becoming derelict and so on. So, um, you know, we, we must expect now for the next 10 years that diamond production will continue to decline steadily in this country. And we need to diversify the economies of those towns that were reliant on diamond mining away from mining into other activities so that we maintain levels of employment and, 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 and uh, economic activity in those areas. Mm. I mean, you've answered the question that I wanted to ask, particularly looking at, uh, uh, you know, us going back to uh, the uh, good old days whereby we were mining uh, quite numbers, uh, large numbers of diamonds. There. But you did mention that, I mean, we started back in the 1800s. So obviously, somewhere, somehow in the next uh, 10 years, as you're saying, the projections are not really, really looking good for the country. Well, I think that um, large-scale industrial mining is no longer viable in many of these instances. And so we need to convert to smaller-scale mining and to artisanal mining, and we need to regulate for that kind of mining. You know, the other thing about mining in South Africa is that South Africans were largely excluded from uh, mining. You know, black South Africans were never actually allowed to own mines until 1994 or to participate in the mining economy except as cheap labor. You know, so when we talk about small-scale artisanal mining in areas like Kimberley, that might be viable to put food on the table for people in those communities. It might not be so viable for a large-scale industrial company like De Beers. You know, and we should really begin to plan uh, policies and, 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 and regulations and laws to allow for artisanal mining instead of having a war against small-scale miners. Mm. Uh, David von Weg, thanks very much, uh, much appreciated for coming through and just giving us an insight on uh, the latest when it comes to the decline in the diamond production in the country. Much appreciated. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the opportunity. That was uh, David von Weg, who is uh, the mining analyst helping us unpack uh, the decline in the diamond production in the country. Uh, the take out from that was that, look, the country needs to go to small scale mining or what we call artisanal mining because, uh, you know, at this current stage, we will continue seeing the numbers dwindling down. Let's take a quick ad break. When we come back, we speak to economist Professor Bonke uh, Duma uh, on the economic impact of the decrease. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching So It's Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Tabo Mulukwani. If you just tuned in, we are analyzing the recent diamond production report for the third quarter of 2023, which reveals that there's been a third consecutive decline in the production of diamonds. Now, before the ad break, we spoke to a mining expert on the matter, and we now shift gears to the economic impact of this decrease. Now, joining us uh, via Zoom uh, to help us with the conversation is Professor Bonke Dumisa, who is an expert on uh, economic matters. Uh, he's joining us now via Zoom. Prof, thanks very much for your time. Good evening, welcome to the show. I just could not hear anything, but I can hear my echo. Um, yeah, Prof, uh, if you can hear me there, um, uh, we recently learned that South Africa's mining up output fell for the third month in a row. 
um, uh, you know, uh, just tell us why are we seeing this decline? I think it's it's important for us to look at the big picture first before I, I focus on the question you just asked now. You must remember that last year, yeah, 2022, SARS actually said that they made more money, they had more revenues coming from the minerals sales across the board, especially from the PGM, uh, platinum and, and, and gold and gold minerals, but di diamonds were a part of that. But what happens is we've got this volatility in the markets when it, when it comes to minerals, as we know that unfortunately diamonds have been, have been dropping, not steadily, but drastically for a long time. I don't know whether diamonds are no longer forever now because they, they've dropped by over 35% since the, since the year 2000. And so this, this recent, um, 1% drop year on year for 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 diamonds but 64% drop quarter on quarter is not really surprising because the di the the demand for diamonds is no longer as high as it used to be even though people are still getting engaged and even though people still give it to 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 their loved ones when when they are proposing and and as gifts but it's no longer as used as much as in the past one of the reasons for that one is you've got new types of 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 uh, minerals which are used now in industrial functions that where they used to use diamonds before and that, that that is one of the reasons why the demand for for diamonds has gone down and the people who produce diamonds have also been complaining that it's very expensive of producing diamonds because they've got to use open cast mining where you do you do not have as many byproducts that the people who produce gold and platinum have when when they when when they produce those because other than the gold and platinum that they get there they can use some of the of, of the byproducts from 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 all this all the soil that they they have excavated in the process so those are some of the things then that you've seen a steady decline in the production of diamonds not just in south africa but throughout the world um, I mean, Prof, so what can be done to revive the nature of, uh, you know, mining output uh, uh, of the country in its entirety? Because obviously, somewhere, somehow, this is concerning. Well, I think we, rather than just looking at diamonds only, we've got to look at the big picture. As I say, we, we are producing more minerals now in different areas areas i mean many people did not know about platinum mm. some 20 years ago and as it, as it is now platinum is, is is really selling a lot because it was used in platinum converters in 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 in, in, in catalytic converters for cars in order to emit less emission etc so one man's meat is another man's poison so Diamonds, I don't think that they, they will be revived to the levels where they were because at mm. the time when they were producing them, many people do not know that diamonds were, were also used in the industrial uh, functions, in the production of some other things and in, in cutting, etc. It's no longer the case as it is now, but we do need to focus on how we manage and make sure then that our diamond mines last longer than anticipated but we don't think i don't think we can we can go out of our way to try and now subsidize those mines you must remember to show that this is no longer working even well the the family which has been specializing in diamond productions has actually moved out of the south african market they are, they now have their have their head offices 
outside South Africa. So that tells you that we are no longer producing as much as they they loved it in, in the yesteryears. Mm. I love diamonds, but I'm being pragmatic here. Proverb, just before I let you go, I mean, um, obviously our ranking somewhere somehow will be affected uh, because currently now we are in the top five uh, as the world's top mining countries. Um, somewhere somehow um, this consecutive, uh, third consecutive decline uh, will, 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 will somehow have some effect on uh, the economy as, you know, the country's economy is not performing well. You know, you are the clearest now when we're going towards the end of the interview. Yes, they, it's not it's not going to affect our... You must remember that our ranking when it comes to gold, South Africa used to be the the top pro gold producer. We gave that over to, to Ghana. So the same thing as, 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 with, as with diamond. The, if we start producing less, but we are producing more of more of, of other minerals, so it balances out. So our our the our revenues from the other minerals make up for the losses that we make from 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 diamond from diamonds, and even in go in in gold. An interesting assessment there. Thanks very much, Prof, for taking the time. I wish we could have you for a longer period, but much appreciated for coming. Thank there, you. Chaba. There was uh, Professor Bonke Dumisa, who is an economist, economic analyst, uh, giving us light on the economic impact of the decrease in diamond uh, production in the country, saying that there is a balancing effect uh, when it comes to uh, you know, our losses and our gains because the country is producing other minerals such as platinum and uh, you know, oh, gold also uh, as part of uh, the minerals that we are producing as a country, even though we are losing out particularly on uh, diamond production there. Let us take a quick ad break. We're coming back with more on the other side. Welcome back. You're still watching So It's Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. We are almost at the end of the show. And before the ad break, we spoke to Professor Bonke Dumisa, who is an economic analyst, about the economic impact the lower production of diamonds has had on the economy of the country. And now we are joined via Zoom by the national spokesperson for the South African Police Service, Brigadier Atlenda Mati, who is here to tell us if at all the decreased, uh, you know, in uh, diamond production could just be caused by illegal mining in the country. Uh, Brigadier, thanks very much for taking the time uh, and joining us uh, this evening. Much appreciated. A very uh, good um, afternoon and thank you for the opportunity. Much appreciated. I mean, we've seen that uh, South Africa has deployed army personnel to um, you know, um, uh, to to what is known as the intensified anti-criminality operation to fight illegal mining. Just uh, please tell us more about the operation and uh, what is the latest development around it. Well, absolutely. Um, the president has decided um, to deploy the South African National Defence Force. Uh, to assist the South African Police Service uh, to fight illegal um, mining in the country. We have noticed um, an increase in this type of activity um, in the years. And as the SAPS, we then created what we call the Illicit Mining Task Team. This Illicit Mining Task Team is operating in six provinces uh, in the country. Limpopo is one of them, Mpumalanga is one of them, Gauteng is one of them, uh, you've got Northern Cape that is also amongst those, and the Northwest. So these are the provinces that have been identified as hotspot areas that are problematic in terms of illegal mining. So yes, we are on the ground with members of the SANTF, they will assist us greatly. I think it's also uh, uh, pleasing and encouraging to note that members of the SAPS since April this year, they have arrested about more than 4,000 illegal miners 
the majority of those, are, uh, uh, according to our stats, more than 1,200 uh, were from Zimbabwe. The, uh, the others, about 62, were South African nationals, and the rest were also from Mozambique and Malawi. So this just goes to show that um, there are a lot of uh, uh, foreign nationals that are involved in these uh, illegal mining activities, especially those that are also coming from uh, Lesotho, the Basotho nationals that we have picked up that they are involved in these types of criminality. Mm. I mean, Brigadier, I'm interested also in finding out how long is the operation going to run for? Is it, uh, you know, in a, in a short term period or just for a long term period, you've going to, um, I mean, you're going to run this operation for maybe until next year or until you see some certain results coming uh, through? Okay, so the illicit mining task team is there to stay uh, uh, within the SAPS. It's a permanent team that has been deployed and created uh, to stabilize uh, what we call the illegal mining operations and areas that are affected by illegal mining. Um, so it will be there until we are able to really solve this problem of uh, illegal mining in the country. You will recall that in September, we saw in a single operation in the Northern Cape, uh, which is rich in your, your diamonds and other minerals. In one operation, we arrested 867 illegal miners in one operation. So that just goes to show that the really illegal mining is there. Uh, but what is important is that our response as the SAPS, we are on the ground. We do have task teams that are always tracing um, these illegal miners. But what is of importance now is that we are busy with the closure of these uh, abandoned shafts. Because what is giving us a problem? We have uh, identified more than 4,000 abandoned mine shafts. These are old mine shafts that have that are being uh, that have been left open so these illegal miners they are going in and accessing these illegal uh, uh, mining shafts or old shafts through these holes and that is creating a problem so we sat down with the department of minerals resources and say let us come up with a plan to close these old mine shafts so that we don't see a, a, an issue where these illegal miners are continuing uh, with their operations and are illegally uh, mining minerals. Because I can assure you and I can tell you that this uh, uh, criminal activity of illegal mining, it is costing the country billions in revenue because people are not paying taxes. Uh, the minerals of the country are being taken out illegally out of the country and they are selling them to the international market. So what is important? now at this stage is that we have to then get to the kingpins who are the people behind this illegal mining because when we do arrest we are arresting the runners the people on the ground that are doing the job but who is benefiting who are the real benefactors in this because we are aware that these runners are only getting the peanuts the small monies who are mm -hmm. the ones that are making the millions. So, so our operations are there. We are continuing with investigation. The crime intelligence is also on the ground to ensure that we eventually clamp down on this uh, illegal mining activities. And I think the SANDF really we do appreciate uh, their their support and them being on the ground together with our police officers, so that we f we work as a force multiplier to cl to clamp down on illegal mining activities. Brigadier, I mean, in the interest of time, before I let you go illegal mining as we've been talking about has become prevalent in south africa and i mean the president himself uh, uh, president Cyril Ramaphosa has even mentioned that the issue is quite serious you know of a serious challenge for uh, you know the sector itself i mean two years ago there was a case of illegal miners having extracted minerals from the ground in kzn how are you seeing cases of this nature happening now with illegal miners i know that you mentioned quite a few uh, provinces there and you know if found that an illegal miner uh, has extracted a mineral from the ground what punitive measure uh, you know uh, uh, put in place uh, for that person so what one of the key issues that we have discussed is to strengthen the law is to ensure that these illegal miners they get convicted to lengthy periods in terms of jail time 
But what is also encouraging is that within the past 12 months, 327 illegal minors were convicted for a period of a year up to 15 years imprisonment. So that is encouraging to us. But what is also encouraging is that 7,000 matters at this uh, uh, point in time are before courts, are before various courts in the country. And those 7 thousand uh, matters are relating to uh, suspects that were involved in the illegal mining activities so that just goes to show that police are working because uh, police are arresting ensuring that cases are trial ready and they are court ready so we are quite uh, encouraged with those numbers but yes there is room to do more to ensure that we prevent combat and 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 apprehend those that are behind these illegal mining activities Brigadier, thanks very much for taking the time. Much appreciated. Thank that, you for the that, opportunity. That is Brigadier Atlenda Mati, the national spokesperson for uh, the South African Police Service, giving us the latest on the issue of illegal mining. As we have recently learned that President Cyril Ramaphosa has set out an operation called Operation Prosper to instill law and order in the country following the scourge of illegal miners in the country. We've also talked about the impact that this issue has on the production and output of minerals and how any illegal miner should be punished should they be found with an illegally extracted uh, mineral. Well, that's how we wrap it up for today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you. So please feel free to talk to us about this episode. Send us an email at Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.za. Alternatively, you can call or WhatsApp us the number 081-531-8857. From myself and the rest of the team, good night and thank you for watching.